welcome Mr. Charles Sakai. And 
when I got to Army Basic Training, the thing is, it was a radical change of lifestyle. I went from a desk job to marching in 100 degree heat, Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And what made it hard for me was, I was the only one in the formation using a walker. <laughs> now, being only five feet four, I couldn't intimidate other people by my size, but I could uh, jump on them and gum them to death with, with my, uh, when I remove my false teeth. <laughs> Another uh, thing that was special about me was I was considered underweight because I weighed only 115 pounds. And I'm so glad I never went to Vietnam because I would have been typecast as a tunnel rat. I could have been in small places that other men could not. And one of the perks of being skinny was that the drill sergeants always gave you extra time to finish your meals. And I really appreciated the two minutes and three seconds extra. You know, they even offered me a dessert. They say, go on, eat some dessert. I mean, I was so skinny. Now, when I uh, rehearsed this script, originally I was going to be either doing it from the top of my head or off a little card that had only nine pictures. But the presentation took so much out of me that I have to use a long form now. <laughs> Now, uh, the Army is always looking for secret weapons, and, you know, most of the time, you don't hear about it. For instance, uh, when I went to uh, language school, the secret weapon that I learned about from my next-door neighbor was his feet. You know, he was the only neighbor of mine, or any soldier in the Army, who could wipe out the whole enemy division by taking off his shoes. <laughs> and it was terrible. I, I could tell when the exact moment that he was taking off his footwear, even when my door was closed and his door was closed, it was not a pretty sight. I, I, I really marvel at the tolerance and patience of his roommate because of the fact that never threw, threw that guy out the window, even once, in the room. <laughs> Now, uh, actually, I, I didn't use a walker or have false teeth. I still have most of my choppers. <laughs> and uh, I did end up doing more push ups because uh, those drill sergeants, they could zero in on the people who weren't up to their exacting military standards. All right, Chicago, drop! You don't know what you're doing. Get on now. So, I did more push-ups than anyone else. The only problem was, you know, I, I don't think they were ready, or the world today is ready when do push-ups without my clothes on. But it, it felt good to me on uh, that South Carolina heat. Okay, uh, this is a true confession. I have been in the psychiatric ward twice, and I know uh, this is a safe audience to tell this in front of because you can relate. However, they, they had all kinds of wonderful and interesting activities for us. But the one I remember fondest was when they took us to occupational therapy. And we got to work on ceramic projects. The ceramic project I remember the most was I got to glaze and uh, fire a German Shepherd, and it looked so realistic that I wanted to complete the illusion by uh, making little ceramic poops. <laughs> but this is the finest pet I ever had. You know, it doesn't have to be exercised every day. It doesn't have to uh, be housebroken. In fact, it's been housebroken from day one. And it has never once humped my leg. And I'm so grateful for small blessings like that. And now, uh, in the hospital, I had plenty of time to listen to people. And, you know, the hospital staff would 
It's kind of intimidated by me because I had a memory of like a tape recorder, you know, one of those obsolete technologies. And of course, I, I didn't have a hidden mic or anything. It's just that I know how to listen to people. Uh, well, seriously, uh, what I did was I remembered everybody's stories, and that's something that uh, has helped me a lot in my career as a facilitator. Uh, what's it? Sorry, this glare is really killing me. Oh, anyway, uh, one thing about me is I uh, made sure that nobody stepped out of line, you know? Uh, because there were some really difficult people to deal with, and I'm just talking about the staff. The patients were really <laughs> easy to work with most of the time. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank you for listening to my strange but interesting story. <laughs> There I'm more like a pioneer of mental health because it's so backward over there that I almost did pass for normal. <laughs> and uh, let's keep going with your next comic. Please welcome the man with the bowler hat, Mr. Chato Stewart. Applause. 